As has happened many times, this video is a direct result of your comments. I had someone ask me how I mount the SCR in the power supply case. And that got me thinking, I have not done a video specifically showing how I put all my power supply together and how I get all my bells and whistles into this case. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. First thing, let's start with what this is. This is the case for an old satellite receiver. I opened it up, I gutted it out. It breathes really well, so it's gonna help keep the components cool. It was a decent size. It was just overall a good housing for everything that I've got going on in here. And there is a lot going on in here. This is one of the first power supplies that I built. And the way that I did a couple of things is not as elegant as I would like. We'll talk about that later. And I will tell you what I would end up doing to make it more elegant. On this side, we have the circuit breaker that goes between the SCR voltage controller and the rectifier. This is the connection for the hall sensor that drives the RPM meter. I used aviation plugs because it makes for a nice, clean install. On this side, we've got two sets of wires here. We've got orange ones and we've got black ones, and that is by design. Anytime I am working on a project and I have two different kinds of voltage, I like the main cables to be a different color. This is for the AC side. If you look right there, that is a blue wire. Now, that was originally a white wire that I colored with a blue Sharpie. I am a huge proponent of having everything colored properly. I do this because not only does it make it easier to make sure that I don't make a mistake or that I don't wire something incorrectly, but if someone else takes this power supply at some point, the standardized colors are going to help in their process. On this side, we have red, black, of course, chassis ground, and that is the DC current. So AC current is coming here and it is a hookup for blue wires. DC current is coming here and this is the hookup for the motor. Now that's the other piece. If we look at the end of that, those are male connectors. And if we look at the end of that, I've got a male and a female connector. And again, that was done by design so that one, it was how to easily hook all this up. But more importantly, it was done so that stuff doesn't incorrectly get plugged in. Almost all motors have female connectors on them. And so having two male connectors here, helps ensure that the connectors from the motor get plugged in here and not here. If I was using a motor that did not have the blue wires, all I would need to do is plug these two into each other and that would complete the circuit. Before we open this up, I wanna explain everything that I have here. This is my RPM meter. This is my two potentiometer setup. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know why I do this. One of these is a much smaller potentiometer as far as how many ohms it is. And that gives me fine and coarse speed control. This is my master power switch. It provides power to everything in this box. And again, there's a lot going on in this box. And this is the on off switch for the SCR component. So when I flip this on, the SCR comes on and provides voltage to the motor through the bridge rectifier. Now, the way I have this wired, this can be turned on without turning this on. However, you won't get the display, that kind of thing. All right, let's open this up and you can see what's going on inside. A lot of wires there, a lot of connections. I'm actually going to make a slight improvement to this design. The way I have it currently set up, the wires coming in and out of here are plugging directly into the switches. 
And because this has to be removed before you can take this cover plate off, it makes a lot more sense to do a quick connect actually as part of the wire. So we're actually gonna clip these. I do already have quick connects on the hookup for the potentiometer. Okay, well that quick connect broke. These two are the power that's coming out of the starting power switch. And I can easily know where they go because I have power coming off the main lead and going into this switch. So I know that white goes here and I know that black goes there. All right, once we have that done, we can remove the cover from this unit. All right, if we look down at that, that looks kind of ugly and well, kind of crazy. There is a lot going on here. Some of these components you should be really familiar with. I have my choke, I have my bridge rectifier. Of course, we already talked about the circuit breaker. Everything is always grounded on my power supplies. So here's the main power coming in from the wall. And I have that going down to this corner post on the SCR voltage controller. And that is grounded down to the body of the power supply. I cannot stress enough how important it is to always make sure that your chassis is grounded, both on the power supply and actually on the machine. You can also see here that I have multiple grounds. This one that can go to the machine as well as other components on this. All right, so I mentioned before that I had an unelegant solution to how I had done some things. And that was this right here. The voltage for the RPM meter is eight to 24 volts. And I have right here a 12 volt power supply. And while that is an effective way to set all this up, it's really not the most elegant way. You can buy a 12 volt power supply that converts AC to DC and is a component board. That is a far superior way to do it. And then you can mount it directly to your power supply. So that's exactly what I am going to do in this situation. I'm going to disconnect this power supply and we will wire in a 12 volt specific power module in place of the plug-in style. That'll clean everything up and make all of this easier to follow. Now, looking at that SCR voltage controller, that doesn't look like the SCR voltage controller that I am constantly recommending to people. And that's because I have taken it out of its case. I have mounted it directly to the board. Now, here's the important part. There is all kinds of circuit connections on the bottom side of this that if they touched the metal here could cause a short. So you actually need to mount this standing off of the main body of the power supply. And I like using nylon connectors. Now, yes, we do have a metal piece going here into the base. We do have this metal terminal that has grounds hooked to it going to the base. But having a connector that does not conduct electricity as a spacer between your SCR voltage controller and your power supply housing is a far superior way to do it. So this power supply has one other feature. As I said before, this turns on all the accessories. It turns on the RPM meter. It also turns on the lights that I had underneath the mill. Connection to that switch is right here. And of course it went into this pigtail. Again, I'm gonna eliminate that. It also goes to right here. And if we flip this around, you can see that that's an outlet. And that outlet went to several sets of LED lights that I also had a 12 volt power supply for. 
And that's what I use to illuminate my work area on my DIY mill. Now the DIY mill has been taken apart. It's eventually gonna become a surface grinder. That was because I purchased a new mill. And this power supply will get reused for that surface grinder. Just for comparison, here we have a totally different power supply, but the same basic configuration. This is the power supply on my lathe. Again, I have orange and black wires, although interestingly enough, on the mill, I used the black wire for the DC and the orange wire for the AC. On this unit, I used the orange wire for the DC and the black wire for the AC. That's something I probably would change. I would make it consistent between machines, but this machine is gonna get sold. So the way I have it set up on the other power supply will be just fine because there will be nothing to compare it to. We open it up, we have the choke. Again, I have solid mounted the SCR voltage controller. You can see the rectifier in there. We have the circuit breaker. And other than that, there's not much to it. This unit did not require all the bells and whistles that the other unit did because it was not directly tied into things like the RPM meter and the lights and so on. So I hope that answers questions on how I mount components in the enclosure. Obviously this video is not on how to wire all this up. I've got tons of other videos that have wiring diagrams and other information on how to do that. So if that's the kind of information you're looking for, you need to check out other videos already on my channel. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that when something new comes up, you'll get to see it. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.